Hey guys, even here and in today's video, actually second video for the day, we have some really, really interesting topics. The first one is about our former Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry, and his now former coach, Abdullah Altaibi. These guys parted their ways recently, you guys probably remember, Abdullah made a post about it, and there was a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, because nobody knew exactly why this happened. These guys worked together for like 10 years, they won the Mr. Olympia together, they placed second at the Mr. Olympia together, they won Arnold Classic multiple times, they had so much success together, but eventually they decided to part ways. Nobody had an idea why this happened, everybody was speculating, but I think the number one consensus was that Brandon wanted to switch coaches, to find somebody new, to start something fresh, because lately he didn't really have that much success, for somebody who won the Mr. Olympia in Arnold Classic, he really wasn't doing that great, and so people thought he wanted to try it with somebody new, somebody potentially better, however, however, Abdullah just cleared the air, at the Menace podcast, and he told us exactly what happened, at least that's his angle, that's his truth, we still don't hear anything from Brandon Curry, maybe there is more to it, there's usually two sides of a coin, you guys know that, but as of right now, we know only what Abdullah told us, and it's very interesting, let me play this for you guys first. Uh, after, uh, since Olympia, I didn't have any phone call with Brandon, I called him, after Arnold Classic, I called him, go uh, Dubai show, because you need Robine and go Olympia, like training camp, you need size, dry, size, dry, make good sense from Olympia, because, you know, Brandon is not uh, anymore younger, and I didn't see any picture, I didn't see any any video, I didn't see anything zero, then I stay uh, with my uh, team, I told him, uh, this time I'm not uh, with the Brandon, uh, last week, Brandon sent me a message, and he tried to call me. I told him, I'm sorry, Brandon, I'm sorry again. I, I don't, I can't prepare you this time, because my heart and my mind say no. And I don't have magic. If I have magic, I go with him, but I don't have magic. I know, Brandon, how you look like now. I know exactly how you look like, maybe like same Chris Corman, <laughs> or maybe smaller. Oh, I know. Come on. I know more more than anyone. I know more than anyone, you know? Uh. All right, we also got some shots fired as well. That last part was funny. So basically what Abdullah is saying is that he fired Brandon Curry because he wasn't committed to this thing. He wasn't committed to coaching. And I understand this completely because I'm a coach myself, but it's different on my level. It's different when you're preparing somebody who is potentially going to win the Mr. Olympia. It's rare that coaches fire their clients. It's very, very rare, especially when they are on such a high level. Even if Brandon doesn't win, if he places inside of the top four, that's still promotion for Abdullah as a coach. And he doesn't have a lot of top guys other than Brandon right now. So it must have been a very tough decision. But as he says, he was trying to reach Brandon, to talk to him, to make him to start working earlier, to do an off-season, to do the Dubai Pro, to have more time in the gym. But Brandon wanted to wait till the last moment to let Abdullah know that he wants to prep for the Mr. Olympia 11 weeks out. And Abdullah didn't like that. It makes total sense. There are many coaches who do not accept their clients unless they're going to work with them for six months at least. Because you need a certain time to create what you want to create. And Brandon, as Abdullah says, is now smaller than Chris Cormier. And if he really did lose so much size. And also Abdullah said later in the interview that Brandon has trouble getting in condition. If he's really smaller, that much smaller now then he would have to kind of grow into the show, get in condition at the same time, kind of pull a Levroni, and Abdul didn't like that, he didn't want to work that way. He probably asked Brandon many, many times to start working earlier, Brandon didn't want to do it, and eventually, when he decided to start working at the very end of the prep, Abdullah said no. At least, that's what Abdullah says. We still have to wait to hear what Brandon has to say, maybe it's different, maybe that's not true, Maybe it's something else, who knows? But later in the interview also Abdullah says that uh, people from Middle East are very aggressive. Like, if Brandon doesn't win the Mr. Olympia, if he doesn't place high, they are not gonna be happy. Like, his DM is gonna be filled with hate messages and so on. 
and Abdullah didn't want that. Unless they can work for a proper time and really do what Abdullah wants to do, he doesn't even want to prep him anymore. So that's the story, at least for now, what we know from Abdullah. Is it the truth? I don't know. You guys tell me what do you think, but I think it is. I think it does make sense. I don't think Abdullah would just come up with this, you know, make it up. But basically what he says is that he doesn't want to prep Brandon anymore because Brandon is not committed anymore fully and Abdullah doesn't believe that Brandon can win Mr. Olympia again or plays very high. And that's it. He doesn't want to ruin his reputation if Brandon doesn't want to do the work. Again, I think it's very understandable, but it must have been a very tough decision. What do you guys think about all this? Tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, next up, we got a guest posing from Keon Pearson in which he looks absolutely ridiculously insane <laughs> I mean this with taper look at this look at this freaking X frame this is just insane it's ridiculous I don't know how to how to call this I mean the progress that he made in this offseason is absolutely nuts absolutely insane is this even 212 anymore I have trouble believing this is 212. And I know it is, by the way. I know it is because last year he had like 10 pounds left until he reaches the weight cap. And now he's going to be facing Sean Clarida again. And it seems like it's going to be an improved Sean Clarida. But take a look at Keon right now. He put on so much muscle. Honestly, guys, you know, he's kind of pulling a Derek here. I mean, Derek used to look incredible, like the best on the stage when he was doing the guest posing, even when he was doing the 212 against the open guys. And if Keon posed against the open guys in the offseason like this, like in a guest posing, I'm sure he would smoke a lot of those guys because of this crazy shape. Super tiny waist, incredibly thick lats, wide shoulders, tiny waist, popping out quads. This is just nuts, lad. This is just nasty. So, I'm pretty sure, after watching this guest posing, I'm pretty sure Keon is gonna win again, because it looks like he made crazy improvements, crazy improvements, man. And, I mean, his waist is super small, super tiny, but only when he's pulling a vacuum. If he relaxes a little, it pops out a bit, but it's the off-season, so it's probably, I mean, he's probably bloated from all the food, and also his diastasis is getting worse, the separation of the abs in the middle, it's getting wider, but again, as long as he keeps the stomach in, as long as he keeps that vacuum deep and tight, and it's extremely difficult to control the midsection the whole time, not just to keep it uh, tight, but to pull it in. Because his body looks so much better with the vacuum at all times. Every single pose looks better when he pulls the stomach in deep. So that's gonna be a tricky part. Hopefully he'll practice the posing enough and be able to do that. Because that's the only flaw that I can find in this guy's physique. Everything else, it's incredible, it's crazy. And I definitely can see this guy moving to the open and doing extremely well over there. Even though he's short, Derek Lansford is short, Haider Japan is short, and those guys are winning. Those guys are the two best bodybuilders of today based on their track record. So height, I mean, if it is not as short as Sean Clarida, for example, or shorter, if you are tall as Keon Pearson, I don't think it matters in open bodybuilding that much. And you know, with his shape like this, with so much size... And imagine if he puts on a little bit more size over the years and moves to the open. Man, he's gonna be, I don't know, like top three in the open? Like Derek Lansford? I don't know. I don't know. But look at this. This is a crazy physique, man. This is really, really incredible. And I know how driven Keon is. I can hear him in his interviews. And I mean, he doesn't do a lot of that stuff. He's really like focused on himself. He's very silent. He just works. He doesn't care too much about the business side of bodybuilding. He's really focused on improving his physique and doing the best that he can on the stage, which is kind of refreshing to see, honestly. Like, lately, all the bodybuilders are businessmen, they're showmen, they're YouTubers, they're all this stuff, and Keon is a bodybuilder's bodybuilder. He's just eating, sleeping, training, and competing and dominating on stage. And I love to see this, honestly. Like, yeah, sure, I would love to see him, you know, speak more often and do stuff. But then again, if he does this and he brings this crazy physique on stage, I think it's the right thing to do. You know, he's going to create a legacy. And like I said, guys, he's going to win the 212 Mr. Olympia again. And then after that, once he switches to the Open, 
he's gonna be a force over there as well, it's only a matter of time. Alright, and lastly, we got some stage photos of Dr. Mike Isratel. I don't know how many of you guys are following this guy. I like his uh, YouTube channel, I like him as a person. I mean, he's a, he's a great guy, he knows a lot of stuff, he has great knowledge. He is a doctor, after all. And like, he's a bodybuilder, competitive bodybuilder. His goal was to turn pro at this show, NPC Universe, by winning his category, which is Masters, over 35 years of age, and uh, he didn't do it. I don't think he even plays inside of the top 5 in this show. Why? Well, the same issue as always. Conditioning. I didn't see the other guys, but from what I'm seeing right here, conditioning is nowhere near good. I mean, yeah, like he doesn't have the best structure, but he's competing in Masters category. None of these other guys are like super genetically blessed with their structures, nor are they like that much bigger than him. I mean, some of them are even smaller. But he lost to basically almost all of them because they are in decent conditioning. And his conditioning was far from decent. Now what is truly the problem here, in my opinion, it's just him not doing a, a classic bodybuilding diet. I mean, I listened to him on Food Habits podcast and he was eating some kind of protein puffs. It was some kind of chips with protein, with like not a lot of carbs. He was counting his macros. He was eating protein bars like one week out. I mean, you can't get in crazy shape eating like that. Everybody knows that. I mean, he's a sciencey guy and like he thinks if it makes sense mathematically, that's it. But no bodybuilding coach with experience would give him that kind of food to eat. That's impossible. Nobody does that. I mean, sure, maybe someone like Dexter Jackson or somebody with crazy metabolism like that, they can eat whatever they want, they can eat junk food every day, I mean, they can get shredded, but not everybody. If you're having trouble getting in condition, you need to stick with the basics, you need to know exactly what you're doing, single ingredient foods, clean food, and that's how you get the job done. Yeah, maybe science can't explain that, but science can't explain exactly everything. Some things in bodybuilding work. We know they work. We can't explain why, but they work. And no, I'm not saying that he's holding water from having like too many sweeteners or something like that. No, he's just he's just not lean enough. There is definitely a lot more to go. Water and body fat. He definitely needed to dig deeper, to go further. I don't know if he has any more shows in plan, but hire a coach at this point and do another show in like 4 weeks from now and let him do the bodybuilding thing, what all bodybuilders are doing, get in shape. And with this much muscle and size that he has, with this shape, I still think he can win this kind of a show. It's not like he is small, it's not like he is in horrible condition, but still there is like 4 more weeks of work, 4 to 6 maybe, and, and that's it, just dial it in. Do a proper peak week as well. I mean, a lot of coaches are cutting out all the sweeteners, all the supplements, like pre-workouts, like creatine, like all that stuff. I like to do that myself as well. I like to keep it clean the last week. Because if it doesn't help, why is it there? You can suck it up for one week and just endure the, the suffering and you know, not eat anything tasty. It absolutely does make a difference in the end. You will not see Nick Walker eating protein bars and protein puffs in the peak week before the show. No, no, no. Bodybuilders figured this out a long time ago. He just needs to hire an actual bodybuilding coach. Let him do his thing. Relax, sit back, not think about anything. Just do the work. Another like four, maybe six weeks. Get in condition and win a pro car. He can do it. He doesn't need to quit or anything like that. He can still do it. Just get in proper conditioning and that's it. Do the things the right way, the way actual professional bodybuilders are doing it. And he wants to become one, he needs to start acting like one. That's all I gotta say on this, guys. Whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, about bodybuilding, subscribe to this channel, stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.